Controversial. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Kind of thought you'd be angrier. I am, but it's not going to overturn the results. I just... Puncher's chance, you know? Felt like we had a chance to make this a series, and it feels like it got taken from us. Yeah. I mean, we've all been there. Yeah, actually. That's... Yeah, that's true. Hey! Uh... Hey. You shut your mouth! What? Who are you? You know, that's a great question. That is a great question. I am the low-quality Department of Player Safety. Okay, so what are you doing here? I swear by all that is holy, if you make one more peep, I'll start handing out Bruin suspension so fast it'll make your eyes bleed. You look great, by the way. You look great. Thanks. Oh, um, <clears throat> so, what are you doing here? Ugh. You know, just stopping by, making sure this sore loser doesn't try anything on you tonight. <clears throat> Don't want him messing with you. Seriously, you look great. You work out? I mean, I'm no stranger to the gym, you know. Yeah, I mean, I can tell. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, but so I think he's, uh, he looks pretty chill, so I, I, think, I think we're all good. Uh, th thanks, though. Anytime, sugar buns. And as for you, what a jerk! I kind of liked him. Low quality fans, I have a high quality burns team, not a dub. Um, genuinely, the game just ended, and I'm trying to process how to talk about this one. Because I don't think I'm going to find a cathartic way to do it. I think I'm just going to get more and more annoyed and upset about it. This is a tough one to swallow. It's a tough pill to swallow, for sure. Uh, because, of course, the story in this one is officiating. It has to be officiating. There's no way, like... Panthers fans who actually watch hockey are also going to be like, yeah, I mean, there's some weird shit in that one. Uh, I mean, the Panthers were the better team through the large majority of this game. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, the Bruins deserve to win. It just sucks that on a very controversial call that the league's explanation tells you, wait, then it should have been called, <laughs> um, that that's where the whole game flipped. Uh it's a bummer. It is a huge bummer. And it's tough because after... I mean, Sam Bennett is in still. And Marshan's out. So Marshan's out. And after just blatant cheap shot, after missed attempted cheap shot, after other cheap shots, after blatantly miscalled goals... The Bruins find themselves in a 3-1 deficit, and there are players who continue to get to do things that Bruins players just simply aren't, nor should I want them to. Nor should I want them to. I'm getting frustrated watching this series because of a couple things. One, I mean, obviously the Bruins are getting the teeth kicked in. The Panthers are a better hockey team. Like, let's... Without Swayman, this series is, is just a complete ass-kicking. Which is fine. The Bruins were in a retooling year, and we just simply don't have the forward, the forwards to keep up. We don't. Totally fine. Another reason it's frustrating is through the last. You know, I did the GGs after Game Seven with the Leafs. Through the last um, series, Leafs fans jumped into the comments, and the large majority, awesome, just knowledgeable, talked about the game, talked about their frustrations. That they had some shit talk to deal out too. Like just all. Fun stuff, for the most part. And it's the complete inverse in this one. The Panthers fans that are jumping in the comments, there's some that are great, but the large majority are cheering on injuries, are just blatantly disgusting stuff. It's not been pleasant to deal with that at all. And then there's the ones that just say cry more, which I think they just are really bad at trash talk or illiterate, so they struggle with the, the rest of it. There are some really great ones. There's some Panthers fans who watch the channel uh, consistently. Really great people. Um, knowledgeable hockey fans. But boy, 
The large majority in this series have not been pleasant. And then, the last portion of what's so frustrating is Lindell dives every time he's touched. Kachuk runs every time there's a scrum. And the one scrum he got caught in, he turtled so fucking hard. And Bennett is throwing cheap shots left and right. Over and over again. It's just, it's just, you watch it and you go, what the hell? Every penalty, not every penalty the Bruins got called for tonight was a good one, but most of them, just undisciplined crap that they shouldn't have been doing. Just blatant, stupid plays that are shifting the momentum back to Florida every time you do it. Uh, Geeky, in particular, late in the game. What the hell, dude? I am, I'm so over Geeky in the top six. I need him at 13 minutes a game, period. But it just goes to show how limited the Bruins are on forward depth right now. It just goes to show, or top six talent, I should say. Uh, it's just been a, been a tough series in general. And I, I remind myself that, hey, the Panthers are favored heavily for a reason. They've got so much talent. They're a better team. They can move the puck better. They just don't need all the extra shit to win, but we still have to deal with that crap, which has been unpleasant. And then in this game, a game where the Bruins had a real chance at it, it's a very controversial play that gets everything flipped around. And that's a bummer from the underdog just trying to have a puncher's chance, and then it feels like you got jobbed, you know? You also got shot, shot, outshot by 20 friggin' shots. I mean, a lot of them were just them peppering Swayman, but I don't know. It's, it's frustrating to deal with because basically the Bruins got a lead, and they kept pushing, but the Panthers turned it on. And the Bruins couldn't keep up, but Swayman was holding them at bay, and then you just get jobbed on something that Swayman can't possibly make a save on. It's a tough pill to swallow. It's a tough pill to swallow. Regardless, we're going to talk about the game. We're going to see if we feel better after. Johnny Busick, banner captain. The chief. Hell yeah. That was pretty cool. Like I mentioned, Marchand, Marchand is out. Uh, concussion protocol. The league didn't make a peep about Bennett's cheap shot. That was pretty blatant. And uh, the broadcast today tried to excuse it, which is really interesting. The lineups go as follows. Uh, I almost said Busick. <laughs> well, couldn't we use him uh, 50 years ago? We could use him. Heinen, Coyle, Frederick, <laughs> Depressed Geeky, Pasternak, JVR, Zaka, Brazo, Lauco, Beecher, Maroon. Lori Mack, Lindholm, Carlo, Watherspoon, Peak, and then Swayman gets another start. Let's talk about this game. Puck drops! And McAvoy sets the tone early with a strong legal hit to Reinhardt, had his head down, went to collect the puck, and got blown up. Honestly, the pass was a bit of a suey because McAvoy was moving before that pass was made. Either way, Reinhardt would keep playing, but that's a good, solid check to get the boys going to get them to understand, we are not backing down physically. Let's go. Now, of course, the Florida Panthers are going to get the best chance early in the game because that's what they've been doing. 240 in, long pass to Tarasenko, who got behind McAvoy. Swayman has to make a huge left pad save after a nice deke by Tarasenko. But that's why Swayman's a net. Although Omar is also great. So, you know. Four minutes in, Pasta, after a, <laughs> after a whistle, punches Lindell in the face. That's 100% a call. He jabs him right in the face. Lundell hits the floor like me hitting a plate of pierogies. I mean, I, I really love pierogies, I'm going to be honest. That guy can't stand on his own two feet. But that's a call 100% of the time. It's undisciplined bull crap. Like, you want to win the game. You want to win the game. Either way, we got to go to the penalty kill, and we do kill it. 845 in. Florida called for interference. We're going to go to the power play. It's a face-off win. The puck sent low. Pushed along by JVR to DeBrusque under the goal line, and he is going to quickly fling this up the right dot to Pasta, who gets to step into it and nail low blocker. Beats Bobrovsky. It's 1-0. Just like that. Okay, it's one goal. We know Florida's good for a couple goals a game. It's not going to be enough. 8.05 in. Maroon goes for high sticking, which was just a blatantly stupid high stick. I have no idea what he was trying to do here. She just nails him. Either way. We do kill it. And shorthanded, we do have a bid from Coyle. He gets Carlo the puck a couple feet in front of Bobrovsky off to his right. He's going to try top corner. Brandon Carlo, not a sniper. He misses by a meter. My goodness. But it did give me a really great chuckle 
So I appreciate that, Brando. I appreciate that. 410 left. Hard work and shift. JVR, four check. Forces quick puck movement. Zaka, four check. Forces more quick puck movement. Brazo, four check. Forces a bad pass that ends on Carlos Stick at the middle of the blue line, who knuckle pucks this. Just bottom blocker. Can't believe Bobrovsky let that go, but knuckle pucks are tough, man. You've seen the movies. 2 0. You feel good about that. You feel like you're going to have to keep pushing, though. It's 2 0 on five shots. Bobrovsky has horrific numbers, but we can't we can't sustain pressure in the offensive zone. Florida's buzzing, you know? I, if we had, if Marshan was back and we had one more top six guy, one true top six guy, I don't know, man. This could be a very different series. But here's the thing. We don't. So we're going to move on. After the goal, Maroon gets Bennett's attention. A little stick whack. And he tells him, come on, let's go. Bennett says no. Then he goes after Kachuk. Kachuk says no. I, I just assume he's inviting the whole team. He then turns to everyone and goes like, come on. Like the whole team. No one, no one wants to fight him. I don't blame anyone for not fighting him because like, there's no... With, you're down two goals. You gotta start winning hockey. So that is just smart play. I'm not gonna act like that's them turtling. That's them going. Ah, we got a different job to do right now. We do. Three thirty left. Swayman and Kachuk get close. Swayman smacks him in the shins with a stick and goes, "Hey man, you want to get closer?" And also does this. I am flabbergasted. Kachuk didn't take that fight. Come on, man. This goalie's been great. I know you've scored six goals the last two games, but you also know how you scored those. It wasn't really Swayman letting those in, was it? Eh, maybe one or two of them. I don't know. I'm surprised he didn't go, actually, this is a great idea. Take the helmet off. Let's go. <laughs> Either way, he skates away. Second period starts. Two minutes in. Zaka is tripped up by Verhage. We're going to the power play. Not good. And then 5-10 left. I can't believe this got in. It's a bummer, and probably game changes a little bit if it doesn't, but... Panthers have been the better team the whole period, the whole time. Florida gets it in deep. Rodriguez gets to collect it behind the net. He flings this to Lendell, who's in the left circle. He hammers it, hammers it low, and it has eyes. It somehow squeaks low underneath the blocker above the skate, finds its way into the net. It's 2-1. During this period, I didn't list the timestamps, but we saw a DeBrusque breakaway. He, gets, he beats DeBrusque five-hole, goes wide. Coil breakaway. Gets Bobrovsky to open up, misses wide, and a Frederick breakaway that gets saved by Bobrovsky. There's so many chances for this game to have turned out differently. So many. Which is why you sit there and you're like, man, when you actually look at the game as a whole, can I blame the refs? Right? Like, damn, there's so many opportunities that the Bruins failed to capitalize on. There's so much ozone pressure by the Panthers, if not for Swayman, blah, 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 blah. Just sucks that it all came down to this controversial play. Right? Just sucks. Either way, third period starts. 142 in. Lindholm for interference. Uh, looks Lindholm makes contact with OEL's chest. The only reason I have a problem with this, OEL's head shoots back like he took a sledgehammer to the forehead. And he drops. You have a mixture of dirty players and divers. I just... I got no respect for this team, man. No respect for him. I, I wanted... Uh, I know the Bruins are losing this series. I see it happening. I get it. But, ah, uh, trying not to just be bitter about it. My God. With two seconds left, a shot is blocked by Peak. He goes down hard. Puck is then bumped over to the crease where Lundell slams it into Sway. Sway makes a save. Puck bounces out to the right. Coil's there. Coil gets cross-checked in the back by Bennett. Falls on top of Swayman. Bennett buries it. Okay. 2-2. Two -two. We challenge. Of course we challenge, because in the rule book, it says an attacking player who knocks a defending player into the goaltender and then scores, that's goaltender interference. That's in the rule book. Look up the rules. Verbatim. Not verbatim. I didn't quote it, but that is in the rule book. So we challenge. They say no. Power play to Florida for your delay of game because your failed challenge. It's going to stay 2-2. Then they released... Their reasoning, and their reasoning was basically, yes, we acknowledge Bennett made uh, contact with Coyle and knocked him into Swayman. We don't think it prevented Swayman from making the save. It certainly prevented Coyle from making the clearance, the cross-check in the back. That's something. Also, 
The swimming's supposed to make that save with a 200 pound dude on top of his dick? Hmm, I could have worded that better, but you know what I'm talking about. What? The explanation of the reason the call was upheld was admitting that the call shouldn't have been upheld. Killing me right now. Killing me. Killing me. Regardless, it's 2-2, and we're going to have to go to the penalty kill. We killed that. And of course the wheels start falling off after, though. 12.30 left of the game. Quick entrance over the blue line after McAvoy fails a neutral zone pinch. Okaposo will knock the puck back to Barkov, who barely keeps it on side, but he does. And he skates down the right side. He's got one defender in front of him. He's got two on his back. And he's able to niftily cut this across, gets it on his forehand, and beats Swayman. High blocker. It's a beautiful play by Barkov. I like Barkov. I would like to like Barkov. Like that's if, if someone's like, is there anybody on the Panthers who's likable? Like Barkov's pretty likable, right? Plays the game the right way. 200-foot player. Really talented. He's no Bergeron, obviously. But um, he's like the Drew Brees to Bergeron's Tom Brady. You know? In the Selkie conversation, at least. That makes sense, right? I think that makes sense. Either way, it's 3-2. 12 and a half minutes left. Look, I had faith. It was, it was a tough one, though, because you're like, man, the Bruins really haven't been able to do much this whole game. So they're going to have to find a new gear with just everything up against them. Their backs are to the wall. And then 30 seconds later, Lindholm with a blatant interference on Kachuk. And I don't, I know people were complaining about this call. I didn't see it that way. Kachuk never had this puck, nor did he even, he was turning in his head. He never saw this thing. Lind, Lindholm lays him out. We're going to the penalty kill. We kill it. And at 829 left, another, like, you have to call this. There's no reason not to call this. Geeky barrels into Bob. He's skating backwards, just forgets where he is on the ice, puts his ass right through Bob's cheek. Anyway, right through him. Of course that's goaltender interference. What the hell are you doing, Geeky? What are you doing? We're going to go on the penalty kill. We kill it. And then with 629 left, we get a power play. Forsling. He trips up, uh, I want to say Zaka. We have no shots in the power play. I mean, you had chances. You had so many chances to be in this game and to win this game. Through all the bullshit, you had chances. And you didn't get it done. It sucks. It really does. But it is what it is. 34 seconds left. Ekblad goes, goes for interference. We have another power play. Nothing comes from it. It is what it is. And that's your final 3-2. And the Bruins are in a 3-1 hole. Look, we're seeing, we're seeing the result of two rosters that are different places of their franchise. I, I don't know how to word that. The Bruins are retooling. This is a retooling year. We just don't have enough up front to challenge the Panthers throughout a game. We just don't. We knew that going into this game. I understand your frustrations, because I'm frustrated too, and I want to overreact and be pissed, and look, the refs screwed this one. They did. This game was heavily changed by the refereeing. I'll give you that. All day. Do I think the NHL is rigging the series for the Panthers? No. Does it come off that way? Absolutely. Both those things can be true. It looks like the NHL is actively rigging the series for the Panthers. It probably isn't. For a couple reasons. One, the NHL is so fucking incompetent, I just can't imagine them being able to pull this off and it not leaking out. You know? I just can't, I can't imagine them being able to do that consistently. Right? The game is so fast. The game's so fast. Pretty tough to rig it. Pretty tough. Although with choices like that, it gets easier. Uh, also, I really don't think there's that much of an advantage to the Panthers moving on versus the Bruins, right? People talk about the money and everything like that. Do you see what the Panthers fans charge for, you know, for their tickets versus the Bruins? I mean, one of them pulls in a lot more revenue than the other, and that's not even an insult to the Panthers. Like, go look up Panthers tickets, look up Bruins tickets. One of those is hella more expensive, you know? But Bruins fans spend more money on jerseys, on, on more on merchandise. The deeper their team goes, the more that keeps going, right? Panthers fans, although they do it, it's just not at that same, like, value of franchise. And again, this isn't me dunking on the Panthers. That's just, there are certain franchises that currently pull more money. Bruins are one of them. I just don't see how that actually is is reality to me. And lastly, and this, I, I don't have a lot of game notes, because really it's just me complaining about geeky. Is really the whole game note, honestly. Um, 
The day I start believing that the NHL is rigging these series and rigging these games is the day I stop watching hockey. As soon as I believe that, truly believe that, I don't want to I don't want to play anymore, man. I don't, I'm not interested. It's not fun. This is about I mean there's there's a certain camaraderie and and I don't know. It's just a pride to it. The crest and everything. This sport what draws me into it so much is just the unending ferocity of the players will to win you can say whatever you want about the Bruins I don't think you can call them soft though there's two teams that are out there right now and one of them has more talent genuinely it really does but these Bruins are fighting tooth and nail for every inch they are and yeah they're getting outplayed and they're not winning the series right now and it's tough it's tough how it's going but there's just so much pride to take in your team just continuing to fight and work their way in. And it, as soon as I believe that the league is throwing all that away because they have agendas or whatever, it just doesn't make it worth it anymore. Although this, this series really does remind me of like 2017 Ottawa. It's very one-sided, officiated. I don't also don't point out that the... the total power plays versus like the how many Florida has had how many Boston has had because Florida had the puck for like 85% of these games of course they're gonna have way more power plays that's just I mean that's just the way it is it's a bummer it's hard it's a hard pill to swallow it's frustrating tomorrow's Monday guys let 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 life come at you normal day tomorrow don't let this fester and sink in and we love this team we love these players, even geeky, and uh, and we're gonna support them till the end. Series ain't over yet, right? <laughs> nice, go beans, go beans! And once again, it's time to give shoutouts to those who are keeping the lights on for this channel. We gotta shout out our top line tier to start. Let's start with Erica Pulley, Colin Nolan, Len Krusevich. The Bugman, Brock Nope, Han Slomo, Tiffany Hagel, Chris and Erica, Coach D, The Atomic Lizard, Bradley Johnson, Aaron Adams, Just Aaron, Darren Woodbury, Brett Arney, Pinsent, and Nick Zatrulo. You guys and gals are absolute studs. But we can't mention the studs without mentioning the Stallions, our all-star tier high-quality inspectors, John Kirk, Jacob Pratt, Heil E. Coyote, Adam Ella, Bruin Smash, Tyler McCourt, Tupton D. Tashi, Joel, Abraxion, De Kingery, The Only Newts, A Tasty Snack, Dutes 42, and Jeremy. I can't say thank you enough. I appreciate all the support. Your absolute legends, stallions, whatever great adjective we can work in here. Thank you everyone from the depths of my heart and go bees!